Paul said, without love, miracles profit us nothing. He said, if I understand every ministry, and I want to cite an example that because here's what happens when we talk about love. We get lovey-dovey and we get sloppy agape. Everything gets drippy. It's like pancake syrup and everybody oozes with it. I just want to be loving, sick of that. Listen, the same God that created love in this sense created the grizzly bear, the great white shark and the African lion. And every one of them have love in them. Not your kind, but there's love in them. Now watch this. I want to cite an example in the book of Kings, 1 Kings chapter 3. It won't take long. Two harlots just had newborn babies. One of them slept on the baby and killed it accidentally. And when she discovered that her baby was dead, she stole the other harlot's baby, claimed it was hers. They ended up in front of a very young king who had just started his reign. The reason this story is powerful is because he had spent the previous night doing what I want us to do. God said, Solomon, what do you want? I'm going to make you a great leader. What do you want? What do you want? And I want to look at you and say, what do you want? What do you really want? Do you want to be one more uh, footprint in the sand that was washed away by the first temptation? You want to be just, you say, Mara, you should preach stuff we enjoy, not this. <laughs> it's just that I'm going to look back on this, and even though tonight and all four nights are going to be amazing, this is going to be my most important sermon to me. Because I'm pleading with you to understand. Solomon, God was, he said, ask me whatever you want. Anything you want, I'll give it to you. And Solomon said, you know what I want? I don't want wealth. I don't want power over my enemies. I want wisdom to rule your people correctly. How many of you know, America could use a president like that right now. America, tell me that we are not suffering under corrupt leadership right now. And Solomon's, the reason that the streets were so wealthy that silver was a common element, the reason the people of the world came to talk to Solomon in the first information age is because of this prayer. He said, God, I want wisdom. That was an act of love. Now watch, two women are standing before him out of the blocks He's met with this. He's explained. These two women claim this infant belongs to them. And they're both saying, I'm the real mother. Give me the baby. All of a sudden, Solomon says, draw out a sword. And let's cut the baby in half and give each one of them half of the baby. And the real mother woke up. Because that's what love does. She said, let her have it. Even though I'm going to be deprived. Even though I... This thing that I love more than anything, I don't want it killed. I want it to live. We're the first generation where we have masses of women storming the streets, begging for the right to kill a baby. But in this story, the mother's love, the real love came out. No. But when you hear a preacher willing to divide the church, rather than to sit with another leader that they disagree with. To say, you know what? It's more important that we don't divide the baby. That out of love, this is what the love is that Paul's talking about. We need all the churches of Colorado Springs to realize that where we agree is far more important than where we disagree. You know, listen to me. Am I preaching yet? I'm gonna tell you something. I hear preachers defend a doctrine to the point of saying that anyone that doesn't agree with what I just said is false and they're wrong and it should be shunned. And we have our own version of cancel culture in the body of Christ. And we don't admit it. One day I was doing a, a convention and the subject that I was assigned was territorial spirits. And God told me what to say and I said, I don't want to say it. I want you to say, don't want to say it. I stood there and I looked at him and I said, I find it ironic that you all are talking about demons 
and calling them territorial spirits when you pastors are the territorial spirits in this city. You got your church, you got your church, you threaten your people if they leave and go to this other church. Why can't we sit down and get to that point where we're saying our nation is burning, our morals are going down the tubes, it doesn't matter, brother. If you're a Christian and I'm Christian, we better sit down and give Colorado Springs one voice and one heart to tell them. <laughs> See, love doesn't divide, brings together. But there is division from the Lord, the sheep and the goats, truth from error. But here is what I'm saying. Before we get to that, let's sit down and talk face to face. Find out why you believe what you believe. Because once we get in each other's presence, there's going to be a powerful thing happen. Can I, how many of you give me five more minutes? Raise your hand. No, sincerely, five more minutes. Let me count, 5, 10, 15, 20. Here's love again. In the Bible, in Acts chapter 14, Paul the Apostle is preaching the gospel to a completely pagan uh, group in Lystra, and he's doing it right before the great feast of Jupiter, where these massive carts are going to come out with fruits and flowers, and these huge wheels that are indescribable. And, uh, and they're going to celebrate. And in the face of it, a man who had never walked, heard Paul speaking, jumped up and walked. And when that miracle was done, everyone turned and looked at Paul and Barnabas and said, the gods have come down to us in human form and began to worship them and bring them great gifts. Here's what Paul did. He immediately tore his shirt open and said, we're men like you are. And we're here to get you away from that. When I hear Christian music emulating the world, I hear preaching that emulates the world. Here we are uh, accepting the fruits of the world's adulation and praise as preachers by saying the things the world wants to hear from us. So we bury the cross, we bury the blood, the existence of hell. We won't mention it because it will cause us to lose the crowd. We're inadvertently creating the church of Oprah and not knowing it. So here's what Paul did. Tore his shirt open, said, I'm just a man. And we are here to turn you away from these things. Look me in the eye. It's love for me to address your sexual sin. It's not hatred. It's not homophobia. Quit it. Quit being, you know, this is why I want to yank the church from Sesame Street and drag her back to Azusa Street. It's not hate. You see, Paul was refusing celebrity. It's not about me. It's about Christ. 